Hi, my name is Aaron. I'm a software engineer here at TempoDB, the Time Series Database as a Service Company. And today we're going to talk about interpolating data points. This is a little bit more of an advanced analysis feature that we provide, so we'll stick to a high level for this uh, talk. But there's much more detailed documentation available on the website if you're interested. Um, so we're going to start uh, our interpolation example with a basic time series uh, with points at January 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 5th at midnight. And the values here are just 1, 2, 3, 5. Uh, and to kick off, we've got three necessary parameters to start working with interpolation. The first is the start time of the query. So in this case, um, as an example, we're going to start on January 1st at noon. We'll see why in a minute. Um, period is similar to the other period parameters that we've gone over. You know, it's, uh, in this case, it's what is the spacing of the interpolated points that are going to be generated. And for this particular example, we're going to go with one day. Um, finally, the uh, function is what method we're going to use to interpolate the points. And we have two interpolation functions available in TempoDB. The first is linear, and the second is called zero order hold. Now, to give you just a high level visualization of how these things work with your data, Let's start with an example that looks kind of like a sine wave. Everybody's familiar with that. If we apply a linear interpolation to a sine wave, what we end up with is something that looks kind of like a sawtooth or mountains. Um, and that's because in linear interpolation, we can only use straight lines. There are no curves. Um, for zero order hold, it would look more like steps or pyramids, because we're holding the previous value over until we get a new one. Uh, in terms of business application, linear interpolation is best when your data is continuous, which is most time series data. Uh, but for cases like where you're counting, say, over a period of time, zero or hold is better because it's impossible to have like a 2.1 or a 5.6 when you're counting things. So this will ensure that your data points are whole. So let's talk about what happens as this query begins. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is generate a list of timestamps at which we should have data. And we're going to do that based on the start and the period. So the first, or the first point that you get back is always going to be the same as the start of the query, matches here. The second point in this example is going to be on the second. So we have a period of one day, also at noon. Then the third, and finally the fourth. So the generation of these timestamps illustrates two important things about interpolation. One, you're guaranteed that all of the timestamps in this uh, return set are going to be at the same interval, one day, always evenly spaced. Two, any missing points, like we don't have a point here for the fourth, are going to be filled in for you. And that's the example of this uh, created data point here. So it's important to emphasize that interpolation is a transformation of your data. Uh, and what's fairly cool about it is that it happens before any other rollups or other analysis that you want to run. So you can combine this with rollups and other analysis functions that TempoDB provides, aggregations, and so forth. Um, but it is a transformation, so you have to keep that in mind. So I'm going to run through an example of what the values would be under each algorithm, to just to illustrate. So here, we got the halfway point between 1 and 2. So linear interpolation is going to give us 1.5, then 2.5, 3.5, and 4.5. Zero order hold, on the other hand, is going to give us 1, because we're holding the previous value over, then 2, then 3, then 3 again, because we didn't have a point at 4, so we just have to keep what was ever, whatever was on the third. Um, this is a high-level overview of how interpolation works. Like I said, we have plenty of documentation available on the website to goes into much more detail about how these algorithms work, what kinds of things you can expect they'll do to your data. Um, if, you, know, you can also contact us directly. And my name is Aaron. Again, I work here at TempoDB. Mm -hmm.